My name is Tobin Hawes, and I am a survivor. It all started out when Tobin wasn't himself. Something wasn't right. I took him to the doctor, and she said he had fluid on his ear. She said, come back in two weeks if he's not right. But two days later, he threw up three times in a row. He wasn't eating. Tobin has an ependymoma. So always when you mention that, it sort of comes like an explosion. It's a shock. I took him to be seen by a pediatrician, and she took about five minutes and ordered a CT scan. That's an especially tricky tumor because it grows beside the brainstem, and that's one of the toughest areas to do surgery. And I remember getting a phone call from my wife at lunchtime saying, oh, we are just here at the hospital. Tobin is getting a CT scan. I'm like, wow, oh, you just got a cold and knee infection. That's a little bit odd. Tobin's tumor was nestled between cranial nerves. So when we removed it, if we went too high, his face would get numb. If we went too far in front, his face wouldn't move. And if we went too far below, he wouldn't be able to swallow. And took Dr. Dirks a good, I guess, eight hours or so to remove the, the tumor that was really embedded in the center of his uh, brain, he basically saved his life. Three years later, an MRI showed it had grown back significantly. Miraculously, surgery was possible, so he had the surgery, and then he was on chemo for a year and a half, and then it came back. It showed that the cancer spread. It was scarier to know this cancer, it's growing, it's, it's active. During chemo, you lose your hair, you take two different temozolomide capsules, and then you have to take a top aside, which is another type of medicine, and it tastes like the worst thing ever. It just tastes really bad. We always have to give people in such terrible circumstances some hope. Today, in 2010, we can do a lot more with these brain tumors than we could do over the last couple of decades. We have better surgery, we have better tools at our disposal, we have better imaging. The best starting place after surgery is to have no tumor there. So if we can get to that spot and have the patient doing well, that's a huge hurdle to cover, and then we can start saying, look, there's, we've gotten him through this first hurdle, there's hope here. Everything's checking out really well. I thought it was time for Tobin to get back to playing hockey, but I told the parents to buy the most expensive helmet they could afford. Every kid is special, and what we want for them is to have a normal life. Even if they have a disease as bad as a brain tumor, we want to encourage them to do the best they can, to have fun, to enjoy life. He's in the best hands at sick kids. Anything that the kids need help with, assistance with, it's taken care of there. Fundraising is absolutely critical to the everyday workings of the hospital. It makes us able to have the best tools at our hands when we do surgery. One of the things that I like about Children's Miracle Network is that when the money is given to Children's Miracle Network here in one community, it stays in that community. In a way, it'd be nice to become out of a job as a neurosurgeon for brain tumors. That would really be uh, the big wish, is if these kids could just come in, we give them the right medicine, and it disappears, and they don't have to go through surgery. When I go to sick kids, I try to encourage kids that have cancer not to give up. Back when Tobin first started treatment, we were introduced to the Bravery Bead program. And what they do is each of these beads represents a treatment or a procedure. 
on Tobin's Bravery Bead Necklace, there's 31 MRI beads, there's 63 radiation beads, there's countless finger pokes and blood transfusions and emergency visits. Just, it's a lot. There's well over 500 beads for Tobin here. I'm so proud of the way that he's overcome his challenges.